Welcome to the In Her Garden. I hope that you are having a beautiful day. And if you're not having a beautiful day, it's a beautiful day. Thank you for sunshine. Thank you for rain. I say beautiful like that because that's how that song is pronounced. <laughs> like the little boy, he um, <laughs> he breaks the word in, down in syllables. So I did the same. And so that's why I say beautiful instead of beautiful. But it, nonetheless, I hope that you're having a beautiful day today. And if you're not, I hope that you begin to dig and find the beauty in your day. Because you can come and worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I used to sing that song when I was in chorus um, in high school. So listen, it's just in my spirit from all those years. And he is the beautiful one, the gardener of your soul. So work with him to find the beauty in your day. Because I guarantee you that it is there. You just need to dig and do some work. Now today's word is for you to just be encouraged and to receive the invitation to go in okay go in so many people focus on on what's going on outside and what's going on around them i've been there myself before listen listen i am not perfect and have become distracted by what's going on outside when i need to be focused on what's going on on the inside okay because that's what's that's what really matters and so today is an invitation for you to go in because it's within you everything that you need is not without it's within i came about this because i was inquiring where am i like i want to know where am i in prayer i wanted to know and so within the time frame of you know in your devotion time you know when you think that you're going to chronologically go back to the place where you left off you're going to start right that was me i was like i'm just going to pick up where i left off and the holy spirit was like i'm going to interrupt you right quick and tell you where you are you're asking so i'm going to tell you right and so when i I asked, he answered, and in him answering me, I was like, hold on, wait a second, okay, <laughs> okay, all right, and it landed on, the pages literally landed on Ezekiel 41, and it's talking about the inner sanctuary, the text is talking about the inner sanctuary when Ezekiel is uh, given this vision, and he's taken to the sanctuary, and the most holy place, if you will, and this is a place where no facades can be, where no pretensions can be, no masks, you can't wear any mask you have to be fully who you are in spirit and in truth right those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth there is no pretending there you have to authentically be whoever he said you are Isaiah went before God and he said I am a man of unclean lips amongst the people with unclean lips like woe is me right he was honest okay so that's where you have to be when you are being invited to go in you are invited into a place where there is true transparency intimacy honesty vulnerability listen if you feel sad you can go in because if you think you feel sad let me tell you something you may feel sad but there the joy is for you the joy of the lord is your strength in the presence of the lord there is fullness of joy he's going to give you strength because it's within you already the kingdom of god is within you it's of righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit and so when you go in you may feel let me tell you something you may feel like you're in pieces but there is peace for you you may feel Feel like you're living have truths and things are not just aligning, but there is righteousness in you. These things are already there. You may feel weak, but when you go in, you're going to have some strength. Do you understand? So when you go in, this is an invitation for you to do the work. Nobody else can do this work for you. You must do this work yourself. It's like when you go into a gym, nobody else can lift those weights for you. Some people go to the gym to lose weight. Some people go in the gym to gain weight. You got to go in the gain weight. Don't ask me where it's at. Okay. Don't ask me where it's at physically. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. But listen, spiritually speaking, you have to have weight. And this weight comes when you do your work. Nobody else can do the work for you. You got to take this journey for yourself. You got to use those tools for yourself. You got to equip yourself with these tools so that you can use them to do your work. Why? Because you got to uproot some habits. You got to uproot some stigma, some dogmas, some labels that's been placed on you. You got to begin to unweed out some things that no longer exist anymore and can no longer exist anymore that to operate in your true identity. When you go in, you are in being you are being invited to do a work that 
has never probably been done before in your entire family. Come on, in your entire family. I know some of you think that, you know, family is first and family is everything. It is not, not in the kingdom of God. God is everything. He said, seek ye first. First, he is everything. He's at the center. He told Abraham, get up and get away from, come, a, come away from your family. Okay, come away from your father's house. Yes, your family is important to God, but get this. God is not a God of just about family. He is a God of generations. I'll say it again because it bears repeating. God is a God of generations. Come on, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is a God of generations. So he just don't want to do it for you. He want to do it for the generations coming behind you. There arose a generation in Genesis. It says this, that there arose a generation that knew not the Lord. In Judges, I believe, there arose a generation. And in Genesis, after Joseph passed and Jacob passed, and um, there arose a generation who knew not the Lord. And so, but in, in the book of Psalms, we are the generations. According to the book of Psalms and King David, we are the generation that seek the Lord. So you got to begin to be in that place. When you are invited to go in, you are going in to say what you want from me whatever you want from me you can get it whatever you need me to do it's a yes whatever it is because you are going into a journey where you are going to be in a beautiful garden you got to guard your garden you got to guard your garden and subtract the distractions that come through family through friends come on so-called friends whatever it is you got to be able to guard your garden just like it was in the garden of eden when there was this cherubim and this seraphim film I believe that was there and they had their fiery flaming swords you know to guard the gate there so you got to be the same way mm -mm, everybody can't have access to you everybody can't come into this journey with you everybody can't have access into this place especially when you are healing especially when you're growing and you're developing that is a place that is intimate that is a place that is intimate you are being invited into an intimate place when you go in because when you go in, you're going to go off. You're going to go off into your purpose. You're going to go off into the paths of righteousness. You're going to go off into the destiny that God has for you. You're going to go off and build the business. You're going to go off and go back to school and get your education on a higher level. You're going to go off and be the woman that God created you to be. You're going to go off and get the help that you need when it comes to your emotions. You're going to go off for so, so that you can have stability. You're going to go off into stability. You're going to go off into security. You're going to go off into safety you're gonna go off into strength when you go in then you're gonna go off when you go in then you're gonna take off when you go in then you begin to see okay if I'm focused on everything that's going on within me you don't have time to be looking on what's going on around you looking on uh looking at looking out on what's going on around you uh, looking about you're so concerned with what's going on in you the habits that's going on within you that you need to renew that you need to build you are you are so focused on you that you don't have time to look on look around you and say okay let's what's going on over there 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 no you're focused on what's going on within you within you okay you're going in so when you do become more aware of what's going on within then you will have clarity to see this stuff that's going on around you it can no longer stay come on if you begin to really go in you're gonna see that the company that you keep if it's not edifying if it's not building you up it's not encouraging you it's not challenging you to be who you're really created to be and it's corruptive it's time for you to change the people around you or change the people around you come on you got to change the people around you or change the people around you this is not about you offending anyone and if they get offended because you are changing then they were never meant for you anyway, but you have to get to a place where you begin to see if it's not edifying and it's corruptive and it's not challenging you, it's not creating a conducive place for you to grow and develop, then you have to do some work. You got to do some work. You have a part to play. You got to participate in your healing. Some people think, oh, the healing just going to come. No, you got to participate in your healing if you want to be healed. You got to participate. This is an invitation for you to come in and you to work on you. Come on. He works in you. 
He that began a good work with in you he's faithful and just to complete it until the day he returns but you work on you you work out your own soul salvation with fear and with trembling mm -mm, you're not working on nobody else you're working on you come on you're working on you you're working on you so if there is some distractions around you you know how to subtract them because it's not adding value to you it's not doing anything for you okay in the kingdom of God, you have options. In the garden, you have options. Y'all ever been in a productive, vibrant garden and it has a selection of a variety of fruit and vegetables? Listen, you have a variety of options in the garden. You don't have to stay where you are if it's not conducive. You can choose what's best for you you can choose if this is in alignment with what he created and called you to be or if it's not and you get to choose to stay or not stay you get to choose to stay around it or not stay around it you get to choose you get to choose you don't have to dim your light the light that you carry you don't have to dim the light that you carry to accommodate and to make others feel comfortable no they got to shine bright too and they got to come up too but this is the thing when you are carrying your light it ain't gonna never go out when you carry this light it's gonna burn forever you gotta be like that proverbs 31 woman who was burning that lamp all night let me tell you something that midnight oil all was a burning them five wise virgins they had their lamp they oil and they fire let me tell you something when you carry this light this light gonna either be hot for some people burning if you will within you it's gonna warm some people or it's gonna burn some people you get either or because your light and your fire should never go out the oil in your lamp should never go out you can sometimes feel burnt out but it should never go out you gotta fan the fiery flame Fan the fiery flame that's within you. Fan it and keep on fanning it through prayer, through worship, through reading, through singing, through praising, through uh, educating yourself, through uh, helping others and serving others. Okay, this is not an uh, invitation for, if you will, everybody to have their eyes on and just see and just notice and all that. No, this is an invitation. It's an intimate invitation for you to go in, for you to go in. You don't have to make no major announcement about you going in in and doing the inner work <laughs> it's not an invitation for for everybody mm, it's not an invitation for everybody i hear that scripture that says when the bridegroom he went out and he asked you know certain people to come in to this uh wedding and some people said no i gotta go do this and i gotta go do that and i gotta go do this and he got mad and he said you know what don't worry about it he sent his servants he said go get the other people go out to the highways and the byways and get those people and see if they want to intend attend give them the invite and they came on in because everybody can't come in everybody is not going to want to come in this takes a strength this takes courage this takes a willingness for you to say you know what forget what's going on around me I'm going in forget what's going on around me I'm going in you ain't gonna focus on what's going on around you because you're gonna be too focused on what's going on within you you're gonna be too focused on creating new habits you're gonna be too focused on renewing your mind be transformed by the renewing of your mind you're gonna be so inundated with what's going on within you that you ain't gonna have time to worry about what's going on without Mm -mm. Mm -mm. you're gonna be too focused so this is an invitation for you to go in this year go in this year and do your work do what's required of you don't be distracted subtract the distractions from whatever may come that is not in alignment with who you're really created and called to be while everybody else was sleeping the woman in proverbs 31 she was up burning that midnight oil. Come on, while everybody else is sleeping, you got to still be up studying. You got to still be up working. You got to still be up tending to your garden. You got to still be up preparing. You got to still be up planning. You got to listen. You still got to be on it. Okay. You still have to be on it. Be about your garden. Come on, be about your garden. Like they say, I'm minding my business and drinking my water and eating my vitamins, taking, taking my vitamins, okay? I'm taking my vitamins, drinking my water and minding my business.
Okay. I am a work in progress, just like everybody else. No one is perfect, but I took the invitation and I take the invitation to go in. He who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide, shall stay, shall reside in. You got to stay in the Lord, in the garden. Come on. You got to stay in. I hope that you are empowered with encouragement to go in. Don't become distracted. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Just keep your gaze straight ahead. Keep your gaze on who is on the inside of you and the work that he's doing on the inside of you. And don't be hard on yourself. It's a healing journey. It's a healing journey. Come on. It's a healing journey where we're going to undo the patterns, but we're not going to continue to make the same mistakes. You're going to course correct the mistakes and you're really going to deal with the patterns that you continually see in your life. Come on. That's what you do when you're invited to a place to go in. Come on. You get to see the reality of it. Mm -hmm. You get to see the root of this thing. You get to see where is it coming from? What? What? Why does this keep your hell happening? When you go in, you're going to see. When you go in, you're going to find out. You're going to know when you go in. You ain't going to have no if and buts about it. It's going to be made very clear to you. So receive your invitation. And I pray that he begins to tell you where you are as well. When you begin to inquire, where are you spiritually? Where are you mentally? Where are you emotionally? That you will be open to receive where he is tells you you are. I hope that you do the work because you are worth the soul work.